Okay, we're going to do a quick demo of Four Lanes Point of Sale Light tool. Uh, this tool is best used for customers who uh, are not high volume retail, right? So like if you have people who are standing in line, you use a lot of cash type of transactions, you do tips, um, that's really not this space. Where this comes in handy is for people who buy on account frequently, uh, people who need the simplicity of a touch screen but don't want to deal with the complex look of something like a sales receipt inside of QuickBooks, right? These are a lot of fields that you feel like couldn't be overwhelming, so we want it to be a little bit more simple. Um, so Point of Sale Lite just sits right on top of QuickBooks. You do have to allow um, access to it. So the first time you access the program or open it up, you do have to um, allow the application to modify the file. So you need to be logged in as the admin user. Um, once you have it, then you can set up your admin password and then log into the program. <clears throat> I'm a little bit zoomed in here, so let me make this smaller. Um, I zoom in for the better uh, so that it looks um, clearer, more clear right on the screen here. Um, okay. So uh, when you're logged in, a couple things up top, you do have the log out button. Um, we do have settings, so the administrator has access to have a default customer, right? Maybe we want it to say whatever the store name is the default customer, or maybe a particular user's um, default customer. So this default customer can be different per installation, uh, sales tax item, class, and warehouse, these are all pulling from your QuickBooks file. So if you do not see your warehouse on the list as an example, then you need to go into QuickBooks and add that in order for it to show up into Point of Sale Lite. Under the application side, you can choose to have it sync to QuickBooks on start, so it just happens automatically, you don't even notice. Um, and then we can have exit show when we exit full screen. So we do have a manual push sync to QuickBooks where you can hit this and you can see it syncs across all of the different things. It goes through pretty quickly. Um, we do have view sales history. On view sales history, when you click into this, you're going to pull up all sales history um, for this register. Um, and then if we need to do sales history across multiple registers, then we can do that as well, or per, per this installation. But if you needed to, like some people put stuff in QuickBooks directly, some people put stuff here, um, then we can make a modification if we need to. Um, as you saw there, you can scan the uh, receipt and have it pull up. So if I scan here the receipt, it pulls me right up to the receipt that I have printed out here, which is Jim's uh, receipt. Okay, and then I can reprint it if I need to. Um, coming across for the main part, oh, I'm sorry, I scooped one thing. Um, we do have the ability to set up different users. So I can come in and add a user, give them a name. So this is going to be Marjorie um, Adams, or this is their login name, right? So Marjorie Adams, maybe like that. And then once they're set up, I can put in their first name, Adams, and then phone number, all these things. I can set a password for them if I want to. Um, okay. Now uh, on the screen here, so when you click into items, um, you can start typing an item. Um, so I can pull up CD. You could also um, scan an item uh, if you had barcode scanning set up. So I don't think I have this item set up, but if I scan something here, you can see it would pull up an item just like it would anywhere else. Um, once I, let me remove that. Once I choose a particular item, um, it pops up a box and I can add quantities if I want to, or I can highlight and change the quantity as well. Um, so I'm going to change this to something smaller, so that one I'm processing. Okay, and say save and close. Um, you can also, when you click on an I, I line, you can say remove here if you need to. You can lower the quantity. Um, we can do a return to. Um, the customer side, a customer is not required, so I'm going to go ahead and process this as if I had no customer so you can see it. Um, we can accept cash 
it will go onto a sales receipt. Credit debit goes to sales receipt. Check um, goes in there to sales receipt, and then on account would convert to invoice. So this is, again, where the simplicity of it makes it so that people don't have to think. They just go, oh, we're paying by credit card. Click the button. It opens up a sales receipt without a customer. Um, and then I would just be able to swipe if I had it connected to an Intuit Merchant Service account. If I don't and I had, you know, like didn't have a swipe, I could also key in the number here as well. Okay. Um, say save and close. Um, best case scenario is that we are um, having this functioning maybe on a split screen or two different screens. Um, I can say save and print here if they wanted a 40 column receipt printer. If they wanted it emailed, we would be sending that out of QuickBooks Financial. If they wanted it printed on a 8.5 by 11, we would print it out of QuickBooks. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and say save for now. Um, actually, let me show you the save and print. So if I come in here, you can see it's printed. It picks up that we paid by Visa MasterCard already, even though that happened inside of QuickBooks. Um, and then I can move on to my next order. So let's go ahead and do another order. Uh, we're going to do the CD drive here. And I'm just going to add one on the customer over here so I can uh, start typing a customer, right? And it'll pull up. So I just hit tab and it starts pulling up the customers. I can use an existing customer. Um, this is pulling from your QuickBooks file already or I have the ability to add a new customer, right? So um, new customer, Marjorie Adams, put in the, put in the name, um, phone number, email, right? So tab, just like we're used to. Oops. Online.com, okay, um, just like we're used to. Um, so I can put in here four lane. Okay. Um, under additional information, we can put an account number if we want to and a, or a credit limit, um, but those are uh, not required, of course. So I say okay. Oh, Marjorie Adams already exists. So let's do uh, Robert Adams. Okay. already did it. <laughs> um, so now the customer has been created in here, um, and I'm going to go ahead and buy on account. So when I click on account, you can see it populates up the invoice for me, picks up the customer, Robert Adams, um, and everything flows across, right? You can see the site is on here. Um, I don't have the class on the line item here, but it would send the class across on the line item. And then I can just go ahead and say save and new, okay? Um, at this point, something else that you might want to do, you can have this little drop down on the side here. So we're just using QuickBooks functionality as is. So it has open balance. It would be showing past due balance. I can take a credit card right here if they wanted to pay some money against their balance. Um, so very similar to like a QuickBooks feel, of course. All right. That is pretty much all I wanted to show. So I hope you enjoy, and I can't wait to hear your feedback. <laughs>